this will be part two of my spring 2024 backyard orchard tour. I tried to get the entire tour in one video, but it wound up running a, a bit long, so I'll go ahead and pick up where I left off on part one. And this is my stone fruit section. Here in this first group here, I have three peach trees growing. This first one here is a multi-grafted peach tree and I'll list the varieties that it has grafted on it on the screen. And this one is a, produces quite a bit of fruit every season. Most of the grafts on this tree put on a really heavy set of fruit and every season I have to thin it down quite a bit. There's one variety on here that uh, didn't do too well. This one down here, it's still alive, but it hasn't uh, really done all that well. And right next to the multi-grafted uh, peach tree, I have a recently planted red barren peach tree. There used to be a Babcock peach tree that was planted here in this section, but it uh, died uh, during the winter months a few seasons ago. Yeah. Hopefully this variety will do well in my area. And right here next to the red barren on the right is a Santa Barbara peach tree. It's not a very big tree, but I did manage to get about 20 peaches off of it last season. And moving along over to this middle group here, right here, these are my nectarine trees. Actually, that one in the front is a spicy Z nectar plum. A couple of seasons ago, I wound up heavily pruning this one because I didn't like the branching that it had. Still need to do a little bit work on in order to get this one the right shape that I'm looking for, but it's got quite a bit of flowers on it, so I should be able to get a pretty good harvest off of it. This next one here that is just starting to flower is my Sauze King Nectarine. I'm not real happy with the quality of fruit that comes off of that variety, and I might wind up pulling that tree. The fruit always splits and spoils before it uh, ripens on the tree, so I might wind up replacing that tree. And the one to the left, that is a Snow Queen nectarine. Good quality and good tasting fruit. And over here in this last group, I have two apricot trees and one aprium. The one in the front is the aprium. The two in the back are apricot. This one here is a Katie, and the one next to it in the back there is a Blenheim apricot. And the one here in front is a cotton candy aprium. Both the Blenheim and the Aprium do really well in my area and I get a pretty good uh, amount of food off of them. They both have a pretty good amount of uh, flowers this season, so it should be another good harvest off of them. The only one that's giving me trouble is the Katie uh, Apricot. Last season, I only got about it was its first fruit set and I only got about four off of it. So hopefully this season it'll do better now, now that it's been in the ground a little bit longer. And here in this section I have my uh, pink Barbie guavas. There's two of them in here. I recently pruned them way back. They were getting a bit out of control. And as I mentioned in some of my other videos on 
not a real big fan of the flavor of uh, the pink Barbie guava. I think what I'm going to wind up doing is pulling one of these and replacing it with a different variety. And here in this section, I uh, have a Karakara, that's the smaller tree on the left. A Karakara orange, that one there. And then the one next to it is a Eureka lemon. Both of these and a few others that I'll show you in a few um, lost quite a bit of leaves during the winter months. Initially, I thought it was due to the cold, but I came out here one night and I found that the trees were just covered with uh, snails and slugs and they had eaten all the leaves off. Like most areas in Southern California, we've been getting a lot of rain lately and the snails have just been coming out. Uh, I've never had this big of a problem with the snails. But as you can see, the tree is starting to put on some new growth. so. Hopefully, it, it'll recover. This one here, you can see uh, quite a bit of damage on the leaves the, the snails did, but it's it's got a very little growth coming out, but it, it should recover. And next is my real red uh, semi-dwarf grapefruit tree, which is doing extremely well. Put on quite a bit of growth. The snails didn't get to it because I have it growing in this container. But as you can see, it's put on quite a bit of a healthy looking leaves here. And it, there's quite a bit of a flower buds that came out as well. So I should be able to get a pretty good harvest this season off of this one. And over here is my Moro Blood Orange on the right and uh, Satsuma Mandarin on the left. Um, snails didn't seem to bother the uh, Blood Orange, but the Satsuma got hit a little bit, and, but it's uh, doing fine, should recover. And over here is my Meyer lemon tree. It's also growing in a container, but this one, uh, just like the Eureka lemon, got hit really hard with the snails. They somehow managed to work their way in here and they ate quite a bit of the uh, leaves. And there's a little bit of fruit that uh, managed to set in spite of losing all the uh, a good portion of its leaves, it's still managed to set some fruit, so should get a decent harvest off of it. And next over in this section here, I have two grapefruit trees. Uh, the one on the right, this one here is a real red grapefruit. And the other one next to it right here, this one is a Oro Blanco. Snails didn't seem to bother the uh, grapefruit trees quite as much as they did the uh, lemon. And over here in this corner are my ice cream banana plants. I recently harvested two racks of bananas off of uh, two of the plants. I have since cut them down. But uh, pretty good harvest uh, out of these plants this season. And there's a third rack up on the top there that uh, it's still green. The bananas are still green, but um, there's about 50 or so on there. 
So we'll be harvesting those soon. And over here are my apple trees. Uh, this one here is a Dorset Golden Apple, which uh, flowered uh, recently and it's starting to set some fruit. This one's a pretty good producer. There always, there's a few flowers that are still in bloom, but this one puts on a pretty good crop every season. And I usually get uh, two crops per season. And right next to it is a new addition to the backyard orchard. This is a Anna apple uh, that I recently purchased. And here are my pear trees. That's a hood pear tree on the right and a pineapple uh, pear tree on the left. Last year I cut these down quite a bit uh, in order to encourage new growth and I did get some new growth here but not as much as I was hoping for and as you can see they're still dormant these are always late coming out of dormancy but hopefully this is and they'll do a little better and here's another new addition to the backyard orchard this is a white sapote, and it's the uh, Redlands variety. And here's a Mexicola avocado that has put on quite a bit of uh, healthy looking leaves. And it has a few flower buds, but I don't expect it's gonna do too much as far as food production but it is looking pretty healthy. And next is my cherry of the Rio Grande that I have growing in a fairly large container. This one does not like the cold and it struggles quite a bit during the winter months. Uh, it'll lose just about all its leaves. Uh, but as you can see now, it's you know, recovered and it's put on quite a bit of uh, healthy looking leaves, but it's, it struggles uh, quite a bit during the winter months. And next is my Australian beach cherry. And this one is a close relative of the cherry of the Rio Grande. The flowers are similar, even the fruit tastes similar to that of the cherry of the Rio Grande. They both belong to the Myrtle family, so they're closely related to one another. And although it's still very young, I did manage to get a very small uh, fruit set last season. Hopefully this season it'll do better now that it's a little bit more mature. And next in this container is my Black Mission fig that is just coming out of dormancy. And right next to it, in the small container there, is another new addition to the backyard orchard. This is a Carmen avocado. And some of the research I've done on this variety uh, claim that it will, in some certain areas, it'll have up to three flowering cycles. And I had a really difficult time getting a hold of this variety. I wound up having to go through Etsy and I wasn't real happy with the purchase. It's the first time I've ever uh, bought a tree off of them and branching, it doesn't look great at all. Uh, and I'm not even sure if it's gonna wind up being a uh, Carmen. So I'll have to wait and see. And next is my Celeste fig tree. This one, uh, which is just coming out of dormancy, this one always does really well. Last season after I 
harvested the fruit, I tipped these branches in order to encourage uh, new growth and better fruit production. This tree has been in this pot for about seven years now, so it's well overdue for a transplant. And I'll probably post a video. Uh, be interesting to see how the roots are after being in the container for so long. And this next one here is a papaya that is native to Ecuador. And this variety is known as babaco. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. And this variety is supposed to be able to handle uh, the winter months really well. Per nursery info, it's supposed to handle temperatures that are just above freezing. It's also a variety that's supposed to do well growing in a container in a mature plant is capable of producing up to seven to 10 papayas per season. Uh, fairly good size, somewhere between eight to 10, ten inches in length. And it's a uh, seedless variety. And this one here is a volunteer guava, which I believe is a Mexican cream guava. Uh, got quite a bit of cold damage, but as you can see, it's starting to recover. And this is another fairly new addition to the backyard orchard. This is my Rolina Deliciosa that is starting to put on some new growth. Uh, doesn't had some leaf damage, didn't do too well during the winter, but it's bouncing back. And this is another uh, fairly new addition. This is a rose apple. And this is my miracle berry plant. Uh, it's not doing all that great. Uh, I've had a few berries that have set in the past, but I've been moving this one around different sections of my yard to see which area does better, but I just haven't been able to find one yet. And this is another new addition to the backyard orchard. This is a Hawaiian papaya. And this next one here is my Hawaiian guava. We get fairly mild winters in my area, but still these, uh, the guavas just don't seem to like the cold too much. Uh, they get quite a bit of leaf damage, but it's starting to bounce back. It's putting on some new growth, so it should be fine. And these are just some Surname cherry seedlings. And this is another new addition. This is a red sugar apple. And I know that the green variety is uh, deciduous. I believe the red is also, uh, it started losing quite a bit of leaves uh, during the winter months. So hopefully now that spring is here, it'll start to do better. And this is another fairly new addition to the backyard orchard. Uh, this is a calmito and I'll list the variety on the screen. This is a really young tree and I probably should have uh, given it a little bit more protection over the uh, winter uh, to avoid some of the winter damage that you see here but in spite of that, it still managed to produce some flower buds, but I'm, I'm not gonna allow it to set any fruit. Still way too young to be uh, setting fruit. And these are my honeyberry plants. This one here is a indigo gem, and this other one here is a tundra, and they're still dormant. They should be coming out of uh, dormancy in a few more weeks. And this is my abu. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, didn't seem to mind the, the cold too much. I did get a little bit of leaf damage, but it's doing well and it's putting on new growth.
And these are some more of the Suriname cherry seedlings. This next one here is my goji berry, uh, the Phoenix Tears variety. And um, this is another one that I'm not a really big fan of the fruit, uh, the flavor of the fruit. And here's a ice cream banana that I transplanted back in June. And this one here is my jackfruit. I'll list the variety on the screen. These trees can get uh, very big and I'm gonna have to find a location where I can plant this one, probably somewhere in my front yard. I don't have much room left in the back. Um, but I recently found a variety that can be maintained supposedly around eight feet or so. So I'm gonna, I've already ordered them. So I'm probably gonna be planting them somewhere along uh, this fence line section. And here in this section in my front yard, I recently planted uh, three trees that I had growing in containers. The one on the far left, this one here is an achacha. All of these trees have only been in the ground for about a month, but they're doing fine. This one here is putting on some good growth. This next one here is my Mao Lang. Uh, this one has flowered before, but it's never set any fruit. And I'm hoping now that it's in the ground, it'll, it'll be able to set some fruit. And this other one here is my blue lily pilly, which is pretty much the same story. It's flowered before, but it never managed to set any fruit. And it's put on a pretty good amount of new growth, so hopefully the same will be with this one. It'll Now that it's planted in the ground, it'll set some fruit. Well, that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If so, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you can follow along and watch the progress of all the new additions to the Backyard Orchard. As always, stay safe, grow your own, and thank you for watching.